Uh, good morning. We are starting our conference, uh, Trends of Diversity and Inclusiveness in Ukraine and Worldwide. My name is Alina Bilay. I'm a uh, head of the program in the uh, uh, European Bank of Construction and Development. And today I'm going to be a moderator of our event. I'd like to um, notice that today our event can be heard both Ukrainian and English. So you can find a link to uh, the language. If you have any questions, please type them uh, in comments. We will see them and will address your questions to our speakers. So our conference uh, will be consisted of two panels with a small pose uh, to um, make a service in order to ask your uh, opinion regarding the question of uh, diversity and inclusiveness. So these are the topics of our meeting today. So I like uh, open our session and um, I'd like to welcome to the opening remark um, the uh, Ms. Lesa Kuzmenka, Iberia Associated Director, Deputy Head of Ukraine, ICAs. Um, good day. Dear participants, on behalf of the European Bank for Construction and Development, I would like to welcome you on our online conference dedicated to one of the most important components of the success uh, in modern European and world companies, namely inclusiveness and diversity. Here, we are deeply convinced that inclusive development issues uh, will become to the fore in the process in building of the business which will be able to demonstrate its effectiveness in the new reality in the world after the COVID-19 pandemic. It, on the dry scale, we already can see that the companies with the inclusive culture are at twice um, as likely to meet and succeed and they show both flexibility and innovativeness. In Ukraine, the BRAVE um, has accepted new types of um, uh, practices where the issues of inclusiveness are the most important, uh, along with the digitalization and green uh, energy. Uh, Bilana, a representative of our um, a bank, will tell you in detail about our new strategy in Ukraine. The topic of inclusiveness and diversity is quite new, though it is rapidly gaining momentum. As an international organization, the purpose of which is to su support the economy, uh, we are clearly understand the importance of this component. Throughout all the period, we have um, uh, implemented more than 18 investment projects, which um, uh, include the uh, points of gender and inclusiveness only for 2020, we have signed five um, projects for the 20 billion euros amount. Today, you will be familiar with meet our partners and our project in this area. The purpose of our event is to exchange information and the is the topic of inclusive development at various levels in the different spheres of the economy. This is only very important to understand the tactics and the strategy the uh, state is going to implement. The synergy uh, of um, business and the state should become the background for the successful development. Uh, so today we are happy to welcome uh, the Minister of Economy of Ukraine, who is going to talk uh, to us about the main direction from the point of states. Also, representative uh, of EBRR, Yelena Bochinka and Vladislav um, Alinchuk, will tell us about the national trends and our business representatives will share their project and um, investment they are implemented in Ukraine. Uh, on my personal behalf and on behalf of the bank, I'd like to thank all the participants uh, for you to find a time to join us and to tell and to share about your projects and uh, trends. We do hope that uh, our event will be very uh, useful for all of us and um, some of you may change the attitude to the aspects of uh, inclusiveness and will be inspired uh, to create these uh, points in uh, your company. We will be happy to meet you and discuss uh, all possible um, development um, 
uh, issues. So I wish you all interest in and inspiring discussion today. So thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lisa, for the opening of our event. And now we are turning to our next speaker, and the uh, floor is given to uh, the Iberi Associate Director, GEI, um, Biliana Radonic Korlitsi. So you're welcome. A good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you can see my presentation at the moment. Excellent. So first of all, uh, I would like to say how delighted I am to be uh, here with you today. Uh, my name is Biljana, Biljana radonic Kalinzi. I would like to tell you a little bit about uh, how EBRD approaches gender and economic inclusion in our investments. Um, as a bank, uh, you all know, uh, know us uh, fairly, fairly well. We have a very distinctive private sector focused approach uh, to uh, economic inclusion, uh, which is very different from other institutions of, of our uh, type. So our mission is to promote transition to sustainable, inclusive market economies and make sure that all um, segments of populations regarding of their age, um, gender, geographic location have full and fair access to uh, labor markets, to finance and more generally to uh, uh, equal economic opportunities. So um, our approach uh, is based on the concept of equality of opportunity and focuses on those groups that, that, that face disproportionate barriers to, uh, to economic opportunities. Um, and uh, there we focus primarily on women uh, as youth and uh, people in uh, less developed regions, but we also work on other uh, target groups. So we uh, approach it uh, in, in three different uh, uh, ways. We promote access to skills and employment, and I will talk a little bit about that. We uh, promote access to finance and entrepreneurship, and also access to services that enable economic opportunities. Uh, and, um, and this we do across all sectors of, uh, of uh, economies. We have uh, representatives of agribusiness companies here today, but we do uh, um, uh, in, um, have inclusion uh, across sectors from manufacturing and services to infrastructure to um, uh, property and tourism, et cetera, et cetera, in all of our countries' operations, not only Ukraine and all of the, of the regions. Um, uh, How we do it in practice? Uh, this uh, slide tells you uh, that um, uh, we basically um, work with uh, uh, on two different levels, at the level of enterprise and at the policy level. So at the level of enterprise, uh, we uh, work with our clients uh, to identify their core business challenges. Sometimes the core business challenge could be um, workforce diversity or the skills mismatches that, uh, uh, that, that they are facing. Um, high leading to, to high staff turnover, etc. Then we work together with our clients to find solutions to that jointly, um, be it work-based learning or dual learning training course for particular skills that they are missing or uh, equal opportunities action plans. Uh, or, or we would help them um, uh, develop um, um, mentorship programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in that way, we think this is a win-win situation. It is good for our clients, but it is also extremely good for uh, for young people, for women, uh, for others, because it increases their access to to jobs. Um, at the policy level, when we have a sufficient number of clients in a particular sector, or if we have a client that is uh, particularly keen on uh, taking on a, a large policy challenge at the sectoral or a national level. We then facilitate a dialogue with the, with the government, with normally ministries of labor or education. It could be ministry of, of, of agri, uh, for example, uh, to uh, try to see how we can um, translate those needs of the companies, the demands that the private sector faces with what uh, the, the policymakers can offer. And we would uh, um, help improve occupational skill standards or um, um, generally tra training provision on, on the supply side in that way, remove regulatory barriers to female employment, for example, in the energy sectors, we do that a lot. 
Um, and uh, in that way, uh, we, uh, we scale up our um, solutions that are found at the, at the business level uh, to, to, the policy, uh, to the policy level. Um, our track record on uh, economic inclusion and gender at the EBRD uh, is, is, is very, very good, very strong. Um, our portfolio is growing ye uh, year on year. Uh, we have invested in over 350 investment projects across our countries of operations, which are worth of, uh, around 14 billion euros in investments that have either gender or economic inclusion components. Um, only during the COVID crisis, this is about 400 million euros. Um, and we have a very strong pipeline of projects uh, going forward. A large, uh, large increase uh, over the past uh, few years. Um, uh, and, uh, and we have, um, uh, among other things, um, developed uh, 35,600 training opportunities uh, and employment opportunities for our, uh, our clients. In Ukraine, uh, we have uh, done um, 18 projects worth over 424 million euros uh, in, the, in the past uh, few years. Um, uh, we could do a lot more in Ukraine is what my, my, my message here. And Ukraine is a big country uh, and um, we have done um, these things that I mentioned here. Uh, we worked uh, with private tertiary education to improve accredited skills. We have worked with agri uh, companies, uh, some, of, uh, some of those uh, today on the panel, retail sector as well to um, improve technical, vocational and soft skills um, uh, in professional development. We have worked in road construction to improve um, skills of uh, unskilled young people in, uh, uh, through inclusive procurement. We have um, developed equal opportunities policies and action plans at a company uh, level in public transport and municipal infrastructure. And we've improved digital skills in uh, several um, ICT companies uh, with, uh, with a focus on women in STEM. Na, uh, Finally, um, uh, women in business a credit line is, is another one. But we could do a lot more in, in, uh, in Ukraine, uh, uh, given a number of different things that we do in other countries. I will just give you quick uh, highlights of those. And, and this would be my, my last uh, uh, slide. In Georgia, for example, we are supporting Ministry of Health in developing new professional licensing scheme for nurses and midwives uh, to, to increase uh, 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 employment opportunities and healthcare standards uh, in the country. Uh, we are, uh, for example, uh, uh, preparing and finalizing a study with European Training Foundation, the EU agencies, on the uh, inclusive skills in, for innovation in the agribusiness sector. Ukraine wasn't one of the countries that we piloted this in, but the uh, conclusions and the recommendations that we have for policymakers and for businesses uh, uh, will be applicable to, to Ukraine uh, as well. We've done a lot of work on green energy transition, especially in Kyrgyz, uh, in Kazakhstan and in Egypt, uh, especially women in, uh, in the green energy, uh, uh, green skills for youth in Tunisia, We've worked with um, refugees, for example, in uh, uh, Jordan uh, and Turkey, uh, improving vocational skills, um, as well as uh, um, developing um, sector skill standards in tourism, um, in uh, electrical engineering in southern and eastern Mediterranean, uh, which uh, are also uh, very much applicable to, um, uh, to, 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 to this country. Um, I would stop here and uh, would be very happy to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you so much for you to share in your uh, ideas, opinion regarding diversity and inclusiveness. We will have a small short um, pauses, so we will turn to you. And now uh, let me give the floor to our next speaker. Um, Mikita Suyedan, Head of the Expert Group of Labor Relations, Ministry of uh, Economy of Ukraine, who will tell us about the diversity and inclusiveness is one of the priority of the uh, state policy. So the floor is yours. Um, Спрямовані на поліпшення можливості працевлаштування молоді, жінок, осіб з інвалідністю, осіб передпенсійного віку та інших осіб, які е, мають ризики виключення з ринку праці. Саме з цією метою 
Мінекономіки співпраці з народними депутатами України було підготовлено з закону України про внесення змін до деяких законодавчих актів, спрямованих на забезпечення додаткових соціальних та економічних гарантій у зв'язку з поширенням коронавірусної хвороби COVID-19. Цим законопроектом, зокрема, пропонувалося внести зміни до кодексу законів про працю та визначити поняття дистанційної надобної роботи значкового режиму робочого часу. Цей законопроект набрав чинності в квітні минулого року. Запровадження таких заходів обґрунтувалося необхідністю встановлення карантинних обмежень з метою ефективної протидії поширенню COVID-19 та відповідної регламентації правомірного застосування дистанційної роботи роботодавців та працівників, роботодавцями та працівниками. Водночас, зважаючи на впровадження позитивні зміни у трудове законодавство на ринку праці, все, що залишається низка проблемних питань та правових колізій при застосуванні дистанційної та надомної роботи, значкового режиму робочого часу. При цьому наявні соціологічні дослідження свідчать, що під час пандемії COVID-19 вона Перший aspects and uh, the implementation of the remote working and the flexible working hours. The, uh, the MP and um, other stakeholders have implemented uh, the law uh, on uh, the improvement of the remote work and the work with the flexible working hours. I like to the law has also stipulates the norms regarding those uh, different types of uh, uh, pregnant uh, women or those women who are taking care of their children, um, the, the workers who have more than two children and or with disabled uh, children or parents with a disability uh, of the infant stages or those who take children who adopted uh, children uh, can work on uh, the terms of uh, remote uh, work uh, based uh, uh, on their resources the uh, em employee might have. Along with that, as you know, uh, our country, the trade relations are regulated with the uh, legislations based uh, the USSR, uh, which is showing the regulative notions given the employees um, is going to work under the states. And the current legislations has been formed uh, within the terms of the industrial economies, which have uh, been the four core economies. Um, then uh, from 2000, uh, people, the number of employees has dropped and there will be a need to adapt in the new areas. And the labor resources um, should have been uh, privately developed. With this aim, and with the aim of, of liberalization, the Ministry of Economy has prepared and uh, implemented uh, for the renewal of the government a project of legislation uh, on regulation of the labor relations. And uh, with this law, it is stipulated Так, ну, поки пан Микито... Перепрошую, я закінчу. Закінчу, да. Значно... I'd like to finish. So, uh, this law stipulates to reduce 
uh, the average number of uh, uh, documents and um, employee and employer will agree on their own regarding uh, the schedules, the um, leave requests, and um, uh, about different terms of work and other documents. Um, as we see it, uh, these measures will improve uh, chances for the employment, including for those the most uh, urgent and um, difficult um, um, groups of um, population. So thank you so much um, that we have um, a, a question from our auditorium. And the first question uh, will be addressed to uh, Biliana. Uh, bearing in mind uh, that in certain countries, uh, the diversity and inclusion aspects um, are active, how can you assess the same progress in Ukraine uh, compared to other countries? And what is the position of the EBRD in this relation? Thank you very much for this important question. Um, our assessment is that um, uh, prior to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there has been a lot of progress, uh, both in Ukraine and in other countries of operations on the gender uh, equality, on diversity and inc inclusion, um, um, economic inclusion of uh, uh, economically underserved groups, etc. But then uh, the pandemic hit and the attention was rightly um, directed to, uh, to the most emerging, emergent, the most important, the most difficult uh, decisions that needed to be made um, and, and the, uh, the most vulnerable to be, uh, to be supported. But uh, they are the ones that have actually been most hard hit by the, by the pandemic. And we see that uh, the challenges and the barriers that women faced before have only been exacerbated uh, during increased uh, during the, uh, the pandemic. Um, uh, the same for young people, difficulties in joining the labor force uh, um, uh, was, uh, uh, got even, even worse. The last in, first out principle. The young people were the ones, the, the last to be hired and the first to be let go uh, during, uh, during this, uh, this crisis. So what we, uh, we saw um, uh, uh, a little bit from all of our countries, a bit of um, a panic, uh, if, if, you, if you wish, um, uh, that has now, I think, start, start slowly starting to, to be uh, more, um, uh, more, uh, more systemic and, and the, the governments are looking more strategically at, at these issues. And we as EBRD are very uh, keen to support our governments to, to look at the, um, strategically at, the, um, at their uh, human capital development as such. Uh, 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 not only COVID, but also future of work brings a lot of challenges uh, with automation, with digitalization. And we think that, that this is something that our governments need to, to focus on while bearing in mind that, again, women, young people, um, uh, people from a poorer socioeconomic background have much more, uh, uh, much larger challenges and, and bigger uh, uh, barriers to overcome. And that has to be taken into account. Thank you, Bilana, for your comment. Uh, and another question. Uh, is uh, related to what uh, our colleague uh, Mr. Makita said. Uh, maybe some of the participants of the panel would like to uh, make a certain suggestion concerning it. Uh, do, <clears throat> do you think uh, that uh, the social evolution of uh, the Ukrainian companies was affected by COVID-19 or uh, the process of integration of business circles was slow, uh, uh, slowed down due to the yeah. pandemic. Um, what do you think? Maybe uh, Bilana or Lesia uh, can uh, give us certain suggestions and comments on this issue. What is your uh, position? What is your assessment? I think that uh, this question should be addressed to business circles, in fact, because uh, they had to adapt uh, to the circumstances uh, induced by COVID-19, because we had uh, also a lot of challenges. Uh, now we are working uh, in the uh, remote mode, and we had certain uh, difficult uh, decisions that uh, had to be taken, and we chose a new model that we use in our 
our everyday work and in future i do believe that the situation will uh, change and will uh, change our uh, approach to work of course uh, we will be more flexible more inclusive in order to optimize our work in the best way possible uh, thank you lisa for your comment and uh, i think we will discuss this topic later during our next uh, panel and so we will uh, have the possibility to listen to the opinion of business circles now <clears throat> we are going to talk about global and local trends uh, concerning uh, diversity and inclusion uh, which exist in ukraine and all over the world and now i would like to give uh, the floor to olena boychenka director of human capital advisory service and vladislav milnichuk senior consultant of human capital advisory services from deloitte uh, so, Alena, Vladislav, you are given the floor. Um, thank you, thank you very much <clears throat> uh, for participation in this uh, uh, online meeting. I do believe that the topic we are discussing is very urgent, very important. Uh, Bilana uh, had mentioned that uh, certain social aspects uh, were of uh, primary importance, of course, and uh, uh, the society as a whole, the public at large, uh, should reassess certain values, certain approaches to work, because uh, we had uh, many changes and um, during the pandemic, and uh, of course, it influenced the issue of diversity and inclusion and uh, the activity of business. And uh, me and my colleague are going to share our opinion about ensuring diversity and inclusion um during uh, last month uh, we had a lot of um, discussions in this regard and we would like to share with you certain methodological basis of these problems uh, to share the global uh, context in this respect and uh, the issues which are uh, very important for us right now and to um, uh tell you about the uh, relation between diversity and inclusion uh, to business and whether it is this uh, interrelation uh should be taken into consideration this discussion is very interesting and uh, after that we are going to give the floor to our uh speakers representatives from uh businesses who are going to share their view uh, we will speak about diversity and inclusion, whether it is uh, fashionable right now or maybe it is affected by many factors. So um, now we are going to uh, start the presentation. So the topic of my uh, presentation uh, is... Um, the uh, uh, is some brief historical context um, of the issue i cannot say that all countries uh, in the world uh, uh, understand the importance of uh, uh, <clears throat> diversity and inclusion in the same way and uh, some uh, historical context should be taken into consideration if we if we take into account uh, the countries of Western Europe, uh, actually, we can speak about a great amount of um, migrants. Uh, uh, more than two million of them actually entered the Western Europe. And of course, it influenced the businesses working there. If we uh, speak about retrospective uh, uh, dimension of the problem, we can say that the uh, society should uh, be open to new ideas, uh, um, uh, new approaches actually and uh, new uh, the new ways of how to deal with the workforce the life expectancy uh, was enlarged actually and the countries of western europe uh, actually provide all the possibilities for uh, people of retirement age uh, of eld for elderly people uh, <clears throat> to uh, live a normal uh, life and many of them actually uh, are trying to work uh, right now and of course it may create some challenges both uh, for the uh, private and public sector in order to ensure uh, cooperation between different groups of people. If we speak about the United States of America, uh, we understand that uh, <clears throat> uh, 
during last years, actually, um, this country was perceived uh, like a melting pot, actually. It is the most diverse nation in the world. <laughs> Uh, the country is committed to liberal uh, values, of course, and we uh, can speak uh, about a certain discussion concerning fighting racial discrimination. We can see a long history of fight against racial discrimination in the United States. And, of course, uh, we feel the same trend in the European countries, and it uh, <clears throat> creates certain uh, context uh, with regard to uh, uh, inclusion and diversity. If we speak about the situation that we have in Ukraine, we can see the rise of tolerance uh, <clears throat> compared to the last five years. And of course, Ukraine is now strengthening its positions in this regard. And uh, <clears throat> this is very important for the Ukrainian uh, society. It's a very, a very important and deep change, uh, actually, because now, as you know, Ukraine uh, um, has uh, some uh, difficult times in many respects. A lot of uh, Ukrainian uh, citizens became actually the participants of uh, military actions. They participated in uh, war, in military actions, and uh, of course, there was a wave of internally displaced persons uh, from uh, uh, many uh, regions from the east of the country, actually, because they were forced to move inside the country and uh, um, outside, in fact. And of course, it all uh, changed uh, mm, the situation and created additional challenges for the Ukrainian society, for communities in many uh, regions of Ukraine. And of course, um, mm, this deep and profound changes also uh, defined uh, the uh, main trends. Продовжуємо нашу наше обговорення. Говоримо про глобальні тренди щодо різноманіття та інклюзивності в Україні і в світі. Історичний короткий контекст, я його трошки згадала, нагадаю, на чому ми зупинилися. Ми зупинилися на тому, що кожна країна, кожен регіон проходить свій шлях щодо питань різноманітності та інклюзивності і, відповідно, щодо впровадження відповідних політик і практик. І Україна в цьому сенсі зробила великий крок, особливо за останні 10 років, коли взагалі цінність толерантності and strategies concerning uh, this regard. <clears throat> вже згадувала, а саме наявність на ринку праці представників чотирьох поколінь, зростання ролі командної роботи. Яка... Uh, the increase of the common the team work which is widespread through the different technological trends, the localization of human activity uh, with the um, identification of migrations and it also opens for different societies and countries uh, different areas of cultures uh, which are given to the labor market, uh, if we are talking about it, it's peculiarities uh, and um, along with the challenges. In terms of the companies, and um, uh, I, I would like to recall um, the Minister of Economy, uh, who actually cited the practice of the most uh, um, uh, biggest companies. Uh, so there are different approaches. Apple, for example, one of the most innovative uh, companies, um, uh, Actually, Apple says that inclusiveness is the basis of our business because it's the base for innovation. NASA administration, um, for example, if uh, you have watched a movie uh, hidden uh, 40 or 15 years ago, so there was that back that time no company who uh, had demonstrated um, maximum inclusivity for different representatives of different uh, gender um, sensibility. So now we can see um, the point that um, diversity is the main factor of our mission, uh, as NASA uh, NASA claims, and uh, the basis for its own missions. The creative industry is one of the uh, the first uh, industry uh, which is leaning to the human uh, human capacity. Uh, they consider that um, yeah, that diversity is the most important thing. Along with that, uh, companies and globally are only on their way to overcome the DNA challenges. And, um, 
as um, estimated, um, the EU countries uh, will need 60 years uh, at least to reach the complete gender equality uh, if we will continue the pace uh, we are now observing and uh, maintaining. As for the 2020, only um, 38 say, women, only three say, African Americans in terms of American statistics. And 2019, um, among the leadership teams, only 24 uh, women were a percent were women, 16 percent were ethnic minorities. Uh, clearly, the level of pay gap between women and men globally also is maintained and uh, uh, is 20 percent. So regardless, uh, um, um, general society do does understand the, the issue of inclusiveness. So the way we're going is not an easy one. In terms of Ukraine, unfortunately here, we are recording the gap uh, in, um, in payment uh, in 20 percent. And it's logically foreseen than the pensions uh, gaps because they are dependent on the um, leverage of um, uh, sales. Only 60 eight percent of women are actively working uh, on the one side it is looked as a big um, figure but on the other side uh, in terms of different countries for example switzerland where the number of women are about 80 percent lithuanian um, and uh, german uh, german um, 80 percent um, uh, there we can see that uh, Ukraine might expand uh, uh, the number of uh, women enrolled. Uh, what is interesting, 4% four, four um, of not working women cite personal choice as the main reason why they don't work. So the number of women uh, who wanted to be involved of the work, they do not recognize, recognize it as their personal choice. Is the peculiarities um, specified by the businesses uh, which um, do not allow women to become a, um, a workers then um, uh, a lot of uh, employees do not want to give work to wom women with small children then there was a discrimination against women by age moreover according uh, to um, polls the discrimination of LGBT is now um, gaining uh, more than 17%. And the number of women uh, in the working force uh, might bring up to the $20 um, billion to Ukraine. So, and um, it's very important to involve uh, different levels of groups. And um, it is very essential, both from the personal uh, points of view, uh, but on the state level and the state does recognize that and we're working on that but as i already said um, our way isn't easy um the uh, covid 19 situation also um has impacted uh, the problem uh, it is all, all very emphasized uh, at 60 percent of responsible are are concerned um, that the lack of belonging and uh, connection um, in the working place, um, including in remote um, situation and conditions, which uh, have has worsened. And along with that, um, the female employees, LGBT employees, employees of color are a bit different and uh, have a bit different approach comparing with other groups of people. Uh, 1.5 um, uh, times um, um, more concerned regarding the female employees, um, uh, regarding the challenges with mental health and balance and household responsibilities. And this is the average data and might be worse. And the LGBT employees uh, are 1.4 times as likely as straight and uh, cisgender employees to be concerned about fairness and performance review work workload increases and the lack of connectivity and belonging uh, to this society, this workplace. Uh, Employees of color are 1.5 um, times as likely as white employees to be concerned about career progression and uh, balancing household responsibilities. And um, parents, 
employees uh, compared with those who don't have parents are up to five times more as likely as employees without children to be concerned about career progression and challenges and at home so naturally all these challenges um, have only uh, intensifies and require different action from business. Uh, talking about the diversity, uh, let me remind you, uh, diversity means the representation of different manifest manifestation of human identity in particular environment or group um, and um, uh, relate to various explicit or implicit aspects. So aspects of diversity might be very different. Uh, uh, it might be racial, uh, ethnic, um, um, or age, and uh, there are many aspects of affiliation of diversity, which so far um, the Ukrainian society ha has failed to recognize. So these are different physical, emotional, mental, tradition, social, economic status, place of origin, and um, uh, generation and religious affiliations. So inclusiveness is different because it refers to how people feel or are welcome in the environment. True inclusiveness is achieved through behavior processes and systems. They take into account all aspects of diversity that enable people to interact, belong, and grow effectively. Naturally, in terms of um, um, diversity and inclusions, these are two very linked um, aspects. Um, uh, so, you know, there are very good um, definitions. So uh, diversity has been invited to the party. Inclusion has been asked to, da to dance. So the representative of Netflix uh, has given very good um, identification. The company cannot uh, focus on the different policies for diversities. Along with that, not being good focused on the program of inclusiveness because uh, simply being open to accept different uh, um, uh, employees uh, does not necessarily mean to be ready to create an um, environment where they will be able to um, be natural as much as possible. In terms of um, why we are talking about these um, value benefits of diversity and inclusion and inclusiveness. I'd like to cite a message uh, which linked to the social um, impact. So we're talking the different um, uh, societies, uh, governments uh, who are um, given the first place a person with its different um, intellectual uh, creativity and creates um, um, an environment where everyone can be its, uh, be itself uh, can more chances for the success. So now the level of social impact, which includes uh, diversities, inclusion, um, combating inequality, becomes the main standards for the annual measurements of the company's efficiencies. And um, in terms of how the inclusive culture, uh, which is uh, showing uh, all uh, the different experts uh, of, of the organization and what are the impacts for their businesses. So we are claiming and stating um, by figures. So the organization with inclusive cultures are two times as likely to meet to, to or exceed financial targets. Um, they have more chances to show a high revenue in general and um, and comparing to the different um, players in the market, they have more uh, flexibility, more innovative, because people who are inside this uh, organization are more likely to show uh, their best um, possibilities. And to the more flexible and inclusive company or organization, the more chances uh, for this stable development. And we can state um, that, and we can see this from the result, that uh, inclusive realization and this deep strategic um, contents uh, are giving much more better res results um, comparing to the close organization who are pursuing these practice. Um, uh, so the employees appreciate a diverse and inclusive environment. Um, and um, uh, so survey uh, by Deloitte Global Millennia shows that more than 70% of youth 
they said that diverse and inclusive work environments one of the key factor and they will be much more proud up to um, four times more if a company is working inclusively if if they can be themselves and um, they will have four times more uh, effective uh, compared with those who don't feel such inclusiveness and uh, engagement and the readiness uh, of the personality to become a part of the team uh, is growing um, along with the uh, more openness uh, uh, in different businesses. The issues of um, inclusiveness um, can be jeopardized by the biases uh, and they are mental shortcuts which allowed us from the society within the um, organization they are nature for our brain because brain uh, helps us to protect uh, ourselves um, and on the other hand um, uh, without understanding that we uh, can be unbiased or biased we can make barriers uh, in our small uh, teams or uh, even in the state level so level of biases can be very uh, different uh, so for, we tend to uh, to employ uh, people who are very alike like we um, maybe they have um, the same experience like we have uh, we are tend to um, to accept information which correspond with ours so uh, sometimes it jeopardizes uh, the leaders of this organization to stimulate the increasing cultures and the role of the leader uh, cannot be uh, of development. The impact of the bias is very, very uh, um, immersed. 64% employees felt they had experienced bias in their workplaces and the part of them, uh, they also um, see them among the, the, their, their colleagues um, with different types of um, bias attitude. What does it mean? Um, it certainly has a negative uh, impact uh, and 70% uh, stated about that, even on psychological uh, state, even on these um, um, life um, conditions. So 70% believe that uh, they felt that ex experience winters has negatively impacted and uh, uh, negatively impacted to the level of productivity of personal and business. So not inclusive culture costs a lot for uh, each and every uh, organization. So uh, what uh, types of the biases um, in terms of the age, um, and um, for Ukraine is also corresponds a lot. It's very widespread. It, um, uh, the biases uh, are about gender, race, or and uh, ethnicities. Um, certain categories are also fa facing different um, um, biases. For example, of the militaries, um, maybe uh, people with disabilities. They are claiming that in this or that way they are facing biases and the number of these people are 40 uh, percent how can we achieve a mature dni culture uh, we can talk about that very long but um, to conclude i'd like to share the idea which deloitte diversity uses and um, uh, in terms of the business approaches. Um, uh, actually, we need to understand the historical context uh, and to understand that um, as a rule, organization should start with the maintenance uh, and, or compliance with the rules, with the norms, uh, which requires the creation of equal opportunities for the um, employment and protection of certain levels, for example, uh, people with disabilities. So this is the first uh, step to adhere to the legislation. And this is the only the first step. And we can um, we cannot hear all about mature DNA system. Then we need to create um, program, programmatic DNA, which will spread and uh, promote uh, this, um, this culture. And um, they are very clearly focused uh, to this uh, educative strategy along uh, with this strategy. Then we need to have leaders um, they might be uh, present from the beginning, but for those companies who are aiming um, at higher um, at higher goals, and we will uh, hear in a few moments uh, our 
speakers who are taking these DNA issues very seriously. And here we can say that when CIO leaders are taking responsibility regarding uh, the elimination of barriers and they are lacking models, they are um, creating um, a different conditions and the high level of uh, the inclusive culture, uh, which we can call the social um, responsibility, which has from the one uh, side the system codexes, which are uh, gaining um, and the system and monitoring the culture of inclusiveness. And on the same time, not only leaders or um, people uh, who are assigned to uh, work with the uh, inclusiveness, but each and every employee understands its own um, ideas and goal uh, for the DNA issue, and uh, they are um, jointly creating this. And as for the leader, and uh, I have already mentioned that this is very important. Um, if leader uh, does not show the inclusive uh, behavior, uh, if um, he fails to recognize that there are, might be barriers, uh, if um, uh, he um, have problem with curiosity or cultural intelligence and uh, uh, does not promote them as the very valuable uh, skills uh, important for the business, here we cannot wait for the expansion of inclusive. Uh, we definitely do understand that in order to expand the diversity and inclusiveness, uh, businesses are undergoing and they will continue to undergo in different uh, stages of um, evolutions. Um, and uh, um, so uh, transformation and uh, uh, of policies and um, um, tangible goals um, make ambitions real and match the inside and outside with uh, with those uh, in the societies to reach the status of the social enterprise which is already needed for the person. Uh, this is the most important things uh, we need to reach. So I'm so happy to answer and um, uh, now I'll uh give the floor to Alina Bilan, who will invite speakers uh, for conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Alena, for your uh, presentation. You have explained a lot of aspects of uh, diversity and inclusion uh, during your speech. And um, I do believe that each of these topics deserves to be uh, uh, discussed during the separate seminar, but we are going to continue to talk about it uh, later. Now we proceed with our uh, uh, event and we proceed to the second panel uh, devoted to D&I practices in Ukrainian companies. We invited uh, uh, several Ukrainian companies uh, who actually agreed to share their uh, successful experience, uh, their projects uh, concerning implementation of uh, diversity and inclusion in Ukraine. And now I would like to give the floor um, to the uh, HRD uh, um, uh, manager, Natalia Kulchitska. Uh, please, you're welcome to start. Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now I would like to share my presentation uh, concerning the topic and to tell you more about the main principles that we have in our company. Just a moment. Can you see my presentation on the screen? Yes, it's OK, so let's start. <clears throat> Now I would like you to tell you more about our company, Kernel. Um, um, we uh, actually are engaged in several uh, business uh, uh, spheres. Uh, we actually produce and export sunflower oil, and we are one of the leading companies in Ukraine in this respect. Uh, also, we are uh, among the, one of the main exporters uh, of Ukraine. Uh, you uh, can see actually the uh, figures of our uh, production. Uh, we have our own uh, production. Mm. And we are number one in Ukraine um, uh, in terms of production of uh, agricultural uh, products also. 
uh, we have some figures here on the slide. Uh, uh, we have our own strategy uh, concerning uh, our uh, the development, our business integration, um, but our strategy includes not only uh, the achievement of main uh, results, but also other aspects uh, since 2010-15. Actually, we made a lot uh, in uh, terms of production and uh, the export of our production. <clears throat> And our uh, main goals uh, are also uh, uh, in close connection with the transparency, social responsibility, uh, protection of the environment, and uh, uh, protection of the rights of our employees. These are the basic uh, principles, the core principles of our company, and we are trying to actively implement them in our everyday work. If we speak about diversity and inclusion, I would like to mention that it's not just a fashionable topic, but it enables us to improve our confidence, also attract new talents, um, new employees, professional employees uh, who have a lot of new ideas and enough um, courage uh, in order to implement new ideas. And this is one of the main values of our uh, company that uh, gives us transparency and the possibility to achieve the best results. Um, as my colleague has mentioned, um, uh, according to uh, the results of the surveys, um, we can see that uh, those companies that actively implement diversity and inclusion uh, achieve best uh, results, uh, uh, in particular if they attract uh, uh, women, uh, youth, uh, and of course uh, the company can uh, greatly benefit from it and uh, achieve the best financial benefits and results and if we speak about attraction and uh, we can see also the improved uh, level of uh, inclusion because uh, the companies that practice um, um, actually the values that are directed at uh, their employees um, can create better working conditions and satisfy the needs of uh, all people concerned, uh, of all uh, stakeholders and um, uh, they also uh, actively attract people with uh, disabilities, uh, uh, with people who require physical or mental correction, for instance, and they can achieve uh, the best uh, uh, results and improve their financial indicators. <clears throat> Uh, here you can see some figures on the screen and the next slide is dedicated um, uh, to the activity of our company. <clears throat> We are uh, trying to ensure the comfortable uh, working space uh, for our employees uh, that includes flexible schedule, remote work, uh, uh, ensure work-life balance and uh, actually to uh, secure uh, gender equality in our company. Uh, also, we uh, provide uh, all working conditions, internet connection, for instance, um, free possibility to use any kind of information, actually, uh, irrespective of where our employees uh, are at the moment. Another important option is uh, uh, gender equality, we are trying to uh, ensure the equality between uh, men and uh, women, and we uh, have certain contests uh, and competition for top managers, and we pay a lot of attention uh, uh, to this uh, aspect. And of course, all people are provided with equal options and possibilities in order to take part in the uh, um, contest, for instance, uh, for uh, the position of the top manager in our company. <clears throat> Also, we are trying to work with our um, brand. We are uh, trying to attract international partners and uh, investors and to improve our relations with them. How can it be implemented? Um, 
the main point here is to create the necessary environment for uh, uh, our employees and top managers. Uh, our um, leaders uh, should understand that attraction is very important. We are trying to provide uh, yearly training sessions for our employees and, of course, to adhere to the rules and principles of the codes and policies concerning diversity and inclusion. We um, also uh, are uh, practicing during uh, some time we speak with our employees about gender equality because people should be aware of our policies of our approaches and should be um, should have the possibility to realize themselves actually we are trying to avoid stereotypes uh, and some uh, things that can be offensive uh, from certain categories of uh, our employees when people are aware of it uh, and when people are trying to do everything they can, actually, in order to implement these practices, so we benefit. And of course, we have uh, corporate code and uh, policies that describe uh, the issues of diversity and inclusion. These are uh, the documents that define our approaches and our policies. And we have uh, the training courses for newcomers uh, that uh, give the possibility uh, to pe to these people uh, to um, understand our values. Mm -hmm. Because from the first day of work, uh, people should understand our values and our policies. This is done automatically. And in this way, uh, we uh, uh, provide the information people need and uh, can avoid certain uh, negative uh, trends and improve interaction and cooperation between uh, all uh, different categories of uh, our employees. Uh, thus, we can uh, make life easier for newcomers and to um, uh, make them uh, involved. Uh, also, we have a hotline and uh, the certain uh, standard patterns uh, that uh, uh, also describe uh, the issues of gender equality, of uh, violence uh, uh, at home, for instance, and the ways of how it can be avoided. And of course, we uh, try uh, to be confidential for uh, people to feel free to express their opinion and to have some support in our company, of course. Um, all these measures and uh, projects are uh, permanently discussed. Uh, uh, the meetings of our committee. Uh, this is also a strategy of our company, which is supported at the level of the uh, uh, cor corporate committee. Also, we have elaborated uh, a certain uh, system um, for people, uh, and we also ensure the work of compliance coordinators. Uh, who do this work professionally and uh, it uh, allows us also to conduct training sessions uh, for our employees concerning compliance approaches, and, uh, gender equality, um, and of course so you can address these people. Uh, they uh, organize uh, training sessions uh, uh, and of course it helps us to develop uh, and sometimes we also support our work in uh, different uh, regions and certain people cannot be aware of um, our strategies of our policies but we are trying to disseminate the information uh, among them and of course our training work is very important uh, in order to uh, provide the information for people for them to understand what possibilities they have and what support they uh, can have uh, on our site. Also, engagement of uh, other companies is also very important. We are trying to follow <clears throat> the activity uh, of uh, the international companies to accept the best practice um, in our work on everyday basis and of course if we declare our values we uh, do it transparently uh, openly uh, make, you can do it step by step uh, very um, 
slowly for people to understand our position and to apply it in our everyday work what uh, tools do we have we have the policy of equal opportunities and cultural diversity and we have the relevant training on this policy all the documents are sent to our employees uh, uh, through information letters uh, and we provide a certain uh, links uh, uh, and uh, the information on our website uh, for people to understand uh, our uh, policies they can find all the information they need uh, then we have anti-discrimination uh, policy we organize different flash mobs for instance concerning uh, gender uh, equality uh, that are very interesting for our employees and engage them and work sometimes uh, <clears throat> women for instance told about their uh, problems at work uh, how they can combine their work and uh, <clears throat> home activities so of course there are certain problems uh, a, a lot of them and sometimes it is very difficult for uh, people to combine work and leisure for instance and if you see uh, women who experience uh, difficulties in their life you understand that uh, some incentives should be provided uh, uh, to uh, these women uh, for instance to have a say um, in their everyday work and also flash mob um, may be related uh, to uh, the uh, gender equality and the distribution of uh, um, um, uh, work uh, functions uh, for instance in our company between men and women also we provide consultations and i will show you a slide concerning communication approach we use different communication channels for different target audience uh, uh, for people to have the information they uh, require we disseminate information through email through uh, social networks um, also <clears throat> we have certain uh, systems that allow us to broadcast information uh, for our employees uh, we uh, make video materials audio materials in order to create uh, the environment where uh, diver which ensures diversity uh, in the best way possible and inclusion also for people to understand each other <coughs> and uh, <coughs> of course uh, uh, our work is proved by and our results are proved by many surveys and we are trying to create an environment that corresponds to the values of our company also we signed the declaration on gender equality concerning prevention of home violence we had the relevant uh, project uh, where we told about uh, home violence about psychological violence um, what types of violence uh, exist uh, where you can find some contact information or uh, hotline in order to articulate your uh, problems um, we uh, um, actually told that it would be possible for us to help unfortunately we are very uh, limited in time i've told you about the hotline about education and now the basic principles of our uh, policy uh, are as follows <clears throat> all the representatives of different uh, layers of the population uh, can uh, receive the same rights actually and uh, of course um, also we had a project uh, um, uh, the project on support of parents uh, we provided legal support for our uh, employees in different situations we had programs uh, on a women's leadership uh, for uh, women to be able to <clears throat> uh, have a kind of uh, protection uh, at work also financial support for uh, women with uh, children uh, we support remote uh, work for uh, pregnant uh, women 
So uh, we also had women in supply program, women in sales uh, program, where women are represented in uh, different uh, wor working uh, environments uh, for all people to see that this is quite possible for all women to use uh, the all possibilities at work. Thank you, Natalia, for your uh, presentation. Uh, it was very interesting. Now here you can see our um, our posts that we use in order to disseminate information. Uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. <clears throat> and we uh, are ready to invite you again and again. Thank you very much. And now I would like to give the floor to Vladislav Melnichuk, uh, who is going to do a small survey of our auditory. So, uh, Mr. Vladislav, um, the floor is yours. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. I'd uh, like to add um, uh, certain uh, interactive activities and to ask three questions. Uh, in several minutes or maybe seconds, uh, you will see on your screens the QR code or we will have a chance to go uh, through link and you need to um, type slide.com uh, and uh, add um, hashtag or uh, you can also use a QR code by pointing uh, to uh, your camera. And the first questions, uh, the first question, what are the biggest challenges um, regarding the management of um, uh, human capital uh, you can see for your company? So. Uh, some of you uh, have already answered. Uh -huh. so, um, I can mention what are the options for the answers. So the first, uh, the technical skills for the uh, searches of work and the employees who are already working. Uh, second, the soft skills. Uh, also, the culture of diversity and inclusiveness, the issue of motivation and uh, the engagement of employees. Um, so the leading point is the direction of non-technical skills. Uh, by that, I mean the critical thinking uh, or the skills for communications. And here we have uh, about 70%. So quite moments for those um, who would like to answer. In order to join our um, survey, uh, you need to use your camera uh, and point it up to the QR code or use your browser and type the, uh, the code Dell event. So you can see here that the issue of uh, development of culture and um, uh, diversity and inclusiveness uh, uh, gets a lot of attention and 65%. Um, and also the non-technical skills are also among the uh, top answer. So thank you so much, friends. Uh, we um, do have uh, two questions. And the second one um, with less a number of answers. Uh, is there issue to create inclusive cultures? Uh, and uh, important for your company. Uh -huh. Twenty-seven percent are thinking that um, the RAM more prioritized issues for the company, but 74% uh, 
are considering uh, the issue of diversity and inclusion as an important ones for the company. So thank you so much. And we uh, do have the very last question. Um, what are Ukraine's biggest economic diversity and inclusion challenges in your view? So here we are um, asking what are the factors uh, which are jeopardizing the most um, in terms of development um, uh, in Ukraine. Among the uh, answers, uh, we have uh, the uh, weak uh, development of legislation, the low level of integration uh, for the people with disabilities or with the limited um, abilities or with the military background and um, maybe this uh, spread of uh, bias approach. Uh -huh. Now we have among leading points uh, uh, the issue of um, integration in terms of age, gender, sexual orientation. So these are the bias which are widespread and also our uh, people who are responding also uh, do see that. Regarding the labor migration, we can see that the young people are going abroad because it's uh, quite difficult to provide diversity in terms of the age. And on the fourth place, we have the lack of gender equality, uh, the pay gap, and uh, the part of women in management positions. So thank you so much. We have very interesting results as so. I'm giving the floor to Alina. So thank you so much, dear participants, for sharing your experience. And now I'd like to invite our participants um, who will be able to share with us a practical experience um, oh, uh, for the uh, practice for the uh, in for people with disabilities. So uh, Zlata Kostuk, uh, see, uh, as our experts, uh, the Ashan Vitel Ukraine. So good um, day to everyone. Can you hear me well? So, thank you very much for invitation for this dialogue. I like to share my screen now. Can you see it, it now? So let's start. Uh, so we need to adapt in terms of our timing and new deadline. I'm Zlata Kastuk. I'm a representative of ASHAN. It's a, an international uh, organization for the uh, retail. And we are present um, here in Ukraine since 28. And we are given more than uh, 6,000 employees. And we are present in nine regions of Ukraine. As I've already said, we are an international uh, company and we are still a uh, development. We are um, um, continuing to uh, increase our presence and you can see that in our slides. And today I'd like to take in detail about the uh, diversity and inclusiveness and to share with you our experience from the um, beginning of establishment of our company and now. So historically, and it is very important that our, real, our speakers have already mentioned, so our company, um, uh, uh, it's coming from Fran, France. So there were no questions 
in terms of do we need or not uh, the uh, the programs on uh, diversity and inclusions and um, so uh, it was given to us very naturally through all these points programs and uh, code of conduct and um, we started to develop um, these in diversity and inclusiveness. I can agree with the uh, previous speakers, um, Mitch Natalo, uh, we need to have a basis, at the uh, code of conduct for our employees. And we have created um, an ethics um, uh, chapter. Uh, so uh, um, a document uh, where you can find all points um, uh, of um, um, behavior, for, of for every employee and then uh, we reached um, uh, different uh, options and we have created a practical uh, menu um, based on these um, ethic hardware so uh, we have created a practical um, menu and illustrations and um, every newcomer uh, to our company will be very quickly familiar with the main points and will better understand um, um, our um, uh, goals uh, in terms of uh, diversity and inclusions um, um, for example what uh, uh, i should or i shouldn't do in terms of the company and how can I, and every um aspect uh, aspect of my work um, be engaged in that work uh in terms of the uh, spreading of inclusiveness and diversity overall the policy for the em employees um where we can also have a policy for their uh, responsibilities are, uh, is based on the global uh, goals for this sustainable development, uh, uh, which are um, definitely implemented in the, our policy. So um, here uh, you can see uh, in details our ethic um, chapters. So the discrimination um, point and um, included in the first the very first paragraph, um, as I already mentioned, um, our policy for DNI uh, is based on five directions, um, and um, uh, we can here uh, can include the policy for equality, the um, ethic employment. Uh, we also have already noticed this definition uh, while our webinars in terms of diversity. As you know, uh, Shang Company employs um, people uh, with the um, hearing disabilities. And uh, for more than 10 years, a law employees with these uh, problems um, have been working from the very beginning of our company. And this is the based feedback regarding uh, our uh, conditions um, provided for our employment. Um, in terms of the responsible um, employee. Um, then uh, we, uh, in 2007, started to employ uh, mental ill people. So these are people who have a mental illness um, and um, uh, people with the um, Down syndromes. Uh, which are involved in three regions of Ukraine. And um, there are people who are working for more than uh, two years. In terms of um, compliance uh, to the right for employees, uh, it is also very important um, instance because we do have uh, uh, cases when um, uh, um, our employee thinks that um, if there is no adequate salary, uh, then all uh, rights for the employees can be restricted. So we are trying to visualize and to tell uh, people what are the basic rules uh, for the employees. And we are also uh, trying to improve ourselves in that direction to adaptate our positions, our possibilities for all our employees. So uh, what's new? Um, beside the standards um, insurance program, um, we have recently added the function of the full 
medical examinations every two years. Um, so um, you can undergo a full examination, medical examination. And um, starting from 25 uh, years and after 40 years, um, uh, we are also given the chance to our employees. In terms of inclusion, I also like very uh, the um, the quote that um, just invite uh, is a diversity, but invite for dance as the inclusiveness. So we do apply this approach, um, and um, in terms of every moment being present in our company. So we adapted our uh, communication. We are adding the audiovisual uh, translation and um, more than 100 users can use an applications uh, for uh, these specified translations uh, and company pays for that. Then we are developing our employees. We uh, do have an um, uh, example where a person with um, hearing disabilities um, um, had her career growth. Uh, she started with a one department and then she moved to other one. So um, in terms of so socialization, we are uh, inviting our employees um, both uh, during work and um, beyond working hours. Uh, and um, due to uh, situation, we are introduced and buy options, uh, but we have maintained uh, uh, the rank for the best employee when uh, when it's pronounced, um, uh, we are deciding who are the best um, among all the employees. We also do have um, the healthy breakfast when we um, feed ourselves healthy. And we also invite all our people to be like animators and people with um, hearing disabilities, they are involved in animation. Um, and uh, these are more than 100 people. We also invite sometimes our employees uh, who have disabilities and they uh, translate, they are translating, for example, small meetings for their colleagues. It's also um, a practice uh, to increase their value and uh, um, and um, to increase um, his or, or her possibilities. Um, in terms of our plans and purposes, of course, we are given to maintain and to improve the level of responsible and believing. And what is also important uh, in terms of our very important event um, uh, is to share this important practice because it's so l l nicely to hear that um, Inclusiveness is not widespread as it used to be, but it's gaining momentum now. And uh, uh, today uh, we are sharing uh, more than 10 events, uh, um, our um, ideas um, uh, or approaches and um, and different programs. And we do understand it as a very important activities. Uh, I mean, to tell people how you are doing that, uh, maybe um, uh, by inspiring people for the same actions. And these are our main goal, which is to show all our um, colleagues in small and medium business how it can be implemented. Uh, I mean, the DNA policies. We also have a policy for human resources, but in terms of the practical resources, we do have the practice um, um, in terms of uh, uh, SWOT analysis um, based on the feedback and we also the word of mouth um, implication as well. And we um, have uh, goals for the next five, 10 years in order to move uh, in line with these important, um, I don't want to call it like a trend, but an uh, um, event which is very important to for our country. So thank you so much. I can see that we have questions. 
but we need to continue um, to our communications and we will switch to our um, questions um, at the end. So I am kindly asking you to um, remain with us and to, to hear our answers. And now the floor is given uh, to the uh, Nova Posta uh, CSR director, Lilia Zagribella. So, Thank you very much. I also would like to thank uh, the Organizational Committee and uh, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development for this chance to talk to you uh, this meeting and to share our um, cases um, with regard to diversity and inclusion. It's a great honor for me to join my uh, colleague uh, uh, colleagues from different companies and to uh, to listen to their experience. I would like to uh, share my presentation right now. Uh, is, can you see it uh, in front of your eyes? Yes, yes, we can see it. <clears throat> of course, the issue of sustainable development and related issues are very important for Nova Posta company. Of course, we know about the uh, latest uh, events um, uh, concerning the uh, military conflict in the east of Ukraine, and uh, <clears throat> our company devotes uh, a great attention uh, to the services it provides. provides. Uh, since uh, 2015, uh, we have been developing uh, the relevant uh, policy, and in 2016, we started to publish our reports on sustainable development. Now I would like to focus uh, uh, to focus my presentation on a, a case, a project uh, which relates to diversity and inclusion. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> it also uh, has the relation to our operational activity and uh, um, uh, the project I am uh, talking about <clears throat> Uh, is intended to work with the students because we understand that um, under present uh, uh, conditions, uh, the uh, youth uh, actually faces great uh, um, problems related to uh, labor uh, migration, a lack of la labor uh, resources. And uh, we understand that youth is our future and our company <coughs> provide services uh, devoted to the delivery of goods to um, all groups of population uh, uh, for elderly people, for youth and students are also our uh, clients. We would like to um, attract uh, new talent, so that is why we started to work with the students. We've been working with them for three years and we cooperate with many educational uh, institutions that are eager to uh, help us to provide assistance to us um, uh, for many uh, reasons uh, <clears throat> and um, we work with the kiev national Tarashevchenko university a national economic uh, university odessa national academy polytechnical um, university so we uh, are trying to diversify our activity in this respect. We work in Ternopil, Poltava, Odessa, Zaporizhia cities. And before the start of pandemic, <clears throat> we also cooperated with other uh, educational uh, institutions um, in this field. But then, uh, due to the pandemic uh, situation, we uh, started uh, to work uh, remotely. And of course, we uh, also discussed many issues um, that uh, have been brought to attention today. Uh, and we devoted many, uh, uh, we devoted um, our uh, efforts to educational programs and we achieved good results, uh, in fact. Also, I would like to uh, mention that the project includes three aspects. The first 
uh, uh, one includes uh, tr uh, soft skills trainings. Um, uh, we have certain programs, educational uh, programs um, uh, th that were elaborated for students mm. because uh, uh, students that get uh, their uh, diplomas uh, uh, has no experience, working experience, and uh, that is why he or she may face certain uh, problems in employment. Mm. And um, <clears throat> Also, co-working is very important in this regard, and uh, <clears throat> because people should be aware of how they can uh, become a competent uh, specialist in this or that field or become a successful entrepreneur, for instance. So the techniques and methods that we apply, like presentation skills, conflictology, mm, <clears throat> how the conflict may be avoided, how to create presentations are also ve uh, very important uh, for us and our employees. We had the trainings on how you can create a successful brand because uh, many um, young people are willing to start their own business and we would like to inspire them to give them the relevant uh, knowledge and experience in this re uh, regard because when people <clears throat> Uh, for instance, want to do it, they will succeed for sure and achieve the best results. <clears throat> so, uh, therefore, uh, we also uh, are trying to uh, support small and medium business to support uh, their representatives. Within the uh, framework of this project, we provide on-the-job training and further uh, employment in our company. And the third aspect, um, <clears throat> pertains to development of uh, uh, students' departments uh, and uh, the purpose of this activity uh, actually is to uh, give the necessary experience and possibilities for students um, to experience what business is and they can uh, have the relevant training in their everyday activity at these uh, students' departments. So <clears throat> we can uh, assess the uh, relevant indicators. On the first stage, we have mentors, we have trainers that form the teams of uh, students for future work. And then the students themselves uh, start to work um, uh, in order to gain the necessary experience. Here you can see some uh, photos of uh, students' departments uh, uh, in uh, Rivne city. Uh, you can see photos of our uh, meetings with the students. And we are very happy that in 2020, we had uh, uh, <clears throat> on the job training uh, for uh, students and heads of the departments are very interested in our students uh, in a, uh, and provide real uh, possibilities for them to be employed in the future. And you can see here some photos of uh, how our project works. And of course, um, the influence of pandemic was very great because the training uh, became uh, remote and all the work was conducted remotely and it was very uh, difficult uh, for us to conduct efficient training uh, sessions um, so that is why we created online platform where soft skills are trained and we <clears throat> Uh, broke uh, the whole training uh, module into several uh, groups in some uh, certain periods for our uh, students and we see the um, relevant results of our project of our training program and it is very uh, successful we attracted over 3000 of uh, students um, in this project and um, 
we had a number of activities within the modules. Uh, we have checked uh, the home tasks and the students were very active. We were very anxious that the training will not be successful in the online mode, but uh, finally, actually we succeeded and we can, uh, you can see that we have great results and uh, another uh, 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 another results also can be seen on the slide we continue to work in this uh, field we cooperate with the youth we would like to extend some uh, aspects related to employment and we started to receive applications from the educational institutions um, <clears throat> in fact and we are processing them uh, uh, and we understand that they feel a real interest uh, in our activity thank you lilia thank you for your presentation and uh, finally i would like to give the floor to uh, the representative of ubc group another ukrainian company and so we would like to uh, listen to their experience of uh, diversity and inclusion, how they actually <clears throat> resolve uh, social issues. And uh, uh, Buklerska Ludmila uh, uh, is given the floor from UBC Group. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, nice to meet you. It's a great honor for me to be here today with you. I've been working in this company over 17 years. I love my job and love my company very much indeed. <clears throat> uh, we are working in B2B mode and we uh, produce everything which is required for business development. So we are working only with uh, uh, business representatives. <clears throat> Here you can see the photos of our plants. We have seven of them. <clears throat> we work not only in Ukraine, but in other uh, countries. Uh, the inclusion is a very popular word, but uh, actually during uh, 25 years, uh, the meaning uh, has not changed uh, and we try to be uh, inclusive in each respect because it's very important for us it's a good uh, attitude towards people around you at work maybe i was just lucky because i worked in such companies or agreed to work in such companies but um, inclusion openness transparency and good uh, attitude towards people were also my priorities and ubc is uh, one of such companies the main value of our company is our uh, in place human resources because it is the core of business success now we have over uh, five uh, <clears throat> a uh, thousand of uh, in place and our philosophy the philosophy of our leader uh, is the inclusion uh, since his birth probably and it is shared uh, by um, our employees it was noted at our uh, at our um, uh, corporate website we are doing everything that the work uh, 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 is interesting uh, attractive for people and so our founders do believe that this is the best approach we hire people who share our philosophy our values and this is the only thing which uh, is very important for us <clears throat> we do not pay attention to age uh, gender mental or cultural uh, capabilities or experience so uh, the main thing you should do to work in our company is to share our values my presentation may be uh, uh, very emotional and I will show you some photos. <clears throat> now uh, you can see uh, um, uh, our leader at the photo, the founder of our uh, company. This slide shows 
that uh, they work in our companies like a game. We have some entertaining uh, events. We have workers that uh, actually are members of different orchestras and the like. Our company provides all the possibilities for uh, personal development. Here you can see our employees, uh, part of them who came uh, from us directly from the educational institution. Now they are top managers, vice presidents, directors of our plants. So they made a good career in our company. We do not accept uh, discrimination and do everything uh, which is possible to avoid discrimination. We provide equal opportunities and possibilities for our employees to feel uh, themselves like a, a part of our big family. You can see our vice president uh, <clears throat> actually on this uh, photo. And it uh, testifies to the fact that we have all necessary for our employees uh, training sessions uh, uh, starting from the moment a person starts work. <clears throat> we have MBA league. For, uh, here you can see uh, the first league uh, photo, which includes uh, top managers, ordinary uh, workers and employees who proved by their work that they want uh, to develop, they strive to develop, and they have all the possibilities. In one group, you can find a vice president of the company and an ordinary manager. Uh, everyone passes the same uh, tests, actually, and our president uh, can uh, be even graded worse than an ordinary worker. Also, uh, my presentation is very emotional and you can ask a question, how uh, can you do it actually? Of course, you are given the possibilities when the founder of the business is at the head uh, of the whole process, then it is very uh, easy to achieve. You can see that our production is uh, um, uh, includes uh, novel technologies and we provide all possibilities uh, sometimes uh, we provide all the possibilities to people with uh, restricted capabilities, but we do everything we can to uh, provide uh, different types of work for uh, people who require a correction for disabled people. But of course, we have the safety rules that <clears throat> make our work efficient. Social policy also is also present in all departments of our holding wherever they are in the Czech Republic in Canada. Um, and of course, we pay great attention to bringing up uh, a new generation. We invite uh, children of our workers. Uh, we invite school, uh, um, uh, uh, people from school, students, we conduct different competitions between them, organize contests uh, two or three times per year. Uh, parents like uh, this kind of activity very much and they enjoy our entertaining events. Absence of distance between top managers and ordinary workers uh, is at the forefront of our work. It develops um, the corporate culture and we have uh, innovation <clears throat> implementation techniques. Anyone uh, can participate in our policy. Each worker can take part in it. And all people uh, who joined the uh, program after finishing it uh, received some uh, uh, gifts and respect of their uh, colleagues. <clears throat> Our social policy is directed at mutual assistance. During many years, so we uh, provide orphanage services, we provide material support, uh, we attend uh, children's homes in order to help uh, young people. 
taking into account that the majority of our enterprises is working with the uh, refrigerating uh, equipment uh, because we produce such kind of equipment we have uh, a challenge to find uh, skilled workers in this field because uh, in ukraine there is a lack of educational institutions who provide such specialists and we addressed uh, the problem uh, in the way uh, that we attracted uh, students to work from the uh, higher uh, years of study, final year of study. We have educational institutions in Kharkiv, uh, in Odessa, who also prepare te uh, technicians uh, according to our needs. So they open special departments in order to prepare such specialists. Uh, thank you, Ludmila for your interesting presentation, for your emotions. Unfortunately, we have a lack of time. We uh, have some uh, questions. Um, thank you very much. So uh, I would like to give uh, or provide answers in writing. Uh, uh, after uh, the recording of the conference is over, it's time uh, for us to finish our meeting. It was a pleasure to share the information with you. Thank you very much for <clears throat> uh, participation. I would like to thank our guests. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Deloitte company for uh, organizing this event and um, I do believe and hope that this will be the starting point uh, for implementation of different uh, programs intended to support uh, inclusion and uh, diversity. So please join us, join our activity, our investments, our projects, um, uh, and uh, let's work together. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you very much.